Yeah, happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday. Yeah, ladies, I know you're tired of this. DJ Lab My in the man. house. <laughs> My yeah. Make sure y'all here. <laughs> Yeah, make sure y'all everybody's on their toes. But welcome to Change the Lives, <laughs> hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. We got an awesome show planned for you guys tonight. We're going to talk about a subject matter that I think a lot of parents go through. Uh -huh. A lot of parents go through because we, as a parent, you know, we, we we blindly love our kids, wish the best for them. We give up a lot of stuff, sacrifice and everything. Uh -huh. As our kids grow up, uh, the things that we envision for them to do and the things that actually happen. Don't necessarily be the same thing. Don't be the same thing. Yeah, so tonight, show sure, we're talking about how to deal with disappointment from adult children. Again, how to deal with disappointment from adult children. Because, mm -hmm. you know me, man, I uh, I got four boys, three mm -hmm. adults right now, and I'll be sitting here lying if, if I sit here and say them at four and five and where they at now. They're good kids, they're doing well. Uh -huh. But I'll be lying if I say, you know, they went the path that I wanted, you know, them to go. Uh -huh. uh, Okay. Or with certain things, right, you know, right. can't really trip, you know, and everything got great young men um, that are my children and stuff like that. But you, you still as a parent see certain things. Have an idea. Idea, yeah. Your vision, whatever. Your vision, and you know their reality uh -huh. can be two old separate things. So listen, man, I just want. I think it's gonna be a great show. The gorilla invitation. No, 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 not today, gorilla. Um, <laughs> Again, this is Change Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Right now, we're streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. Feel free to call in to the call-in show. The call-in number is 678-740-9894. Again, that's 678-740-9894. And you have any stories or tips that you want to share in regards to just say if you have, uh, and not even have to be adult children, the children that are growing up and everything where you may say, well, hey, I want to do this, I want to have my ch child do this kind of thing, and it's uh -huh. not going that way, or, you know, you what you've seen or whatever, any story that you want to share, uh, feel free to call in. Again, 678-740-9894. Um, busy, busy, busy week. Man, the weather done dropped all of a sudden, dog. It has. It has gotten a little chilly. Yeah, especially yeah. Especially at night. Yeah, yeah, and uh, everything been going pretty good. Uh, one quick thing before we get started, I want to thank everybody. You guys know I'm a accountant by profession. We, uh, Wrapped up our 22nd straight tax season, Ooh. and set. appreciate it. Not a second, not a second. Yeah. We right. no. Well, we uh, we, we Monday was the tax extension deadline. Mm -hmm. So where a lot of people come in, you know, they, they had the extensions, you know, last minute, and it was good. It was cool. We took care of everybody and stuff, but it was rough, man. The car really don't move like it used to. Oh, really? Shit, <laughs> nah. Yeah. That was rough. Yeah, yeah, boy. <laughs> well, you know. My mind and my eyes uh -huh. don't be on top. That, you know, I can do stuff at 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. I can't do it like that no more, lad. Well, you shouldn't be I able just, to. No, nah, I'm just saying, like, you know, my mind and my you know, my body can still move with that. The mind and eyes, I get drained quicker. Uh -huh. You know, and everything. I, I noticed that about myself. Still can move. Right. But the other stuff just can't do it like that. It but man, ain't, and this ain't gonna happen. Like absolutely. That. But I want to thank everybody that came and supported us this this tax season, the whole county. Uh, I want to tell you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We we'll look forward to uh, seeing everybody in, in new faces again next year in 2024. Also, we'll be hiring and recruiting new tax preparers. I'll be putting that information out soon. And also, we still have the course, you know, how to start your own tax business as well. If you're looking at on the, the platforms outside of TikTok and Instagram. In the description section, all the videos, those links to those particular information, especially the course and our website is in the description section, all the videos. Okay. But going back to what we're talking about today, how to deal with disappointment from adult children. And you know, dealing with disappointment involving adult children can be an emotion, emotionally challenging. Mm -hmm. What we're going to talk about today is some strategies to help you cope and maintain a healthy relationship with your grown up offspring. Okay. Right? And a lot of times, you know, yeah, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, I think people, and I just remember uh, when uh, Chris B, you know, my third son, mm -hmm. well, he was in pre-K. Okay. So by the time Chris was in pre-K, pre I'm thinking T might have been in middle school. Okay. My oldest boy. Okay. So I done been through 
pre-K twice okay. with two kids already. This third one. And I remember the parents in there were asking, you know, hey, you know, if my child a little advanced, you know, can y'all move them around and stuff? And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell, your, your child can color in the line? <laughs> right, yeah. same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't pee right. on themselves. Right, you know what they I'm don't saying? Still yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Right. But, but it, 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 it's just so funny. Whereas, because the reason why I even think about Christopher, I was more, uh, I, was, I was such a young father with T. Uh -huh. And P, right. but in my second, but with, with, with Chris, I was older, so I was uh, more intuitive okay. as a father as far as things that you know what uh -huh. to do and things like that. But what I noticed was by the time they got the fifth, you know, so many parents were there, kindergarten graduation, the parking lot is packed, and as the kids get older, fifth grade or middle school, you got hardly anybody there. Mm -hmm. High school, you got you know folks kind of show up and stuff like that. Right. But it is it, what's funny is that. How you see so many folks with aspirations and everything, they're playing the stuff out. They do certain things, especially when I remember with uh, with touring with the football. Mm -hmm. Lily, you know, dads be all doing it. By the time they get to high school, they falling they off. They falling off and everything. Then when they, you know, I remember senior year, you know, it's like people just don't even know what the hell they're gonna do with a child. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I just want them to get their ass out of bed. I hear that all the time. So and so they say, T with your test baby. Huh? Your, your first son was your test debate. And I think that's kind of it with most parents, because yeah, yeah. we don't get a, um, we don't get like a blueprint or a guidebook to do that. And Say, hey, to your mom real quick. What's up, mama? What's hey, going mama. on? Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you tuning in. But I think that uh, uh, we'll have certain things that I, I mean, God knows, I had a vision and certain things I had planned out with mm -hmm. uh, my children. Uh, not bad, like I said, not bad kids, but they have a whole different pathway. Mm -hmm. And it's rough, man. I'm telling you something, like when you, when you, when, as your child grows, especially you involve, you know, we make a lot of selfless sacrifices for our children. For our children, yeah. And don't think that good. And not that we sit here and want something, you know, in return for it. But what happens is a lot of times you, uh, you forget yourself and lose mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really realize a lot of that till I went through my divorce. Like how much stuff are like, damn, I lost myself. We're about everybody else, you uh -huh. know what I mean? And, and that, happens, that happens far too often for uh, fathers. They, that happens especially with black fathers because we try to do so much and try to make sure our kids stay out of trouble. You know, they get the right advances in school. You know, teachers don't just stick them in the corner. So we just be, especially when we involve like you. stigmas and right, all kind of stuff. Right, right. It, it is rough. And then you, you really, then you, you, you've done all these particular things and they just go on a whole different pathway. Mm -hmm. And um, and as they get older, a lot of times you have to sit back, and I just, I'm just saying this right now as a person with three adult children, you have to sometimes put stuff in perspective mm -hmm. with your kids. And it's kind of difficult when you're going through it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, in regards to like, hey, they doing something you don't agree with, but damn, man, you know, like this ain't what we playing. Right. And you know, I, I'm, I'm talking to your son, I'm talking to your daughter, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, like, they ain't listening to you. They don't get it. As a matter of fact, they listen to people who are just damn idiots. And then they're getting in, getting into stuff you can't get them out of. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the most painful things for any parent to go through when your child going through something and you can't help them. Because mm -hmm. we know the older our kids are, I mean, the younger they are, the more control we got. Uh -huh. As they get older, we got less control. Mm -hmm. And you hope that during the, between those two end pieces, you put enough into your kid that they can think and process on their own and re retain some of the things you said. Mm -hmm. And it may or may, may not happen, you know? Mm -hmm. I was having a good conversation with a good friend of mine that was saying that in regards to certain decisions that uh, children make, you know, you can look at the parents are like, no, you know, parents would be sitting there and tell you, like, some kids just hard-headed. Mm -hmm. Some folks just do what the hell they want to do, regardless of what happens. Right. And you, you can look at certain times you have certain, uh, multiple kids, mm -hmm. you know, four kids. Three of them right down the straight and narrow, deal with mom and daddy. You so got, got that got, one. <laughs> like, where the hell you come from? <laughs> you know, it's just and the decision that they made. Right. And uh, a lot of times, what we got, uh, I just woke up, I tried to call, it didn't work. I just tried to... Is that Where's the, the number? Six, seven, eight. Is it? Got that tone. I got six, seven, eight, seven, four, zero, nine, eight, nine, four. That's correct. Give us a call. Uh, 
I just woke up. Give a call back if you can, if you don't mind. Right. Uh, 678-740-9894. Try to call back if you can. Again, yeah. the call in number 678-740-9894. Try to call back. Let me know if, it, if it's still not working. Mm. And I apologize about that. But the line is up. Um, but again, yeah, if somebody else can call too, y'all let me know if it's an issue mm -hmm. with anything uh, we're calling. But um, what was I saying? Yeah, you, you, when, we, when you lose that kind of control as a parent, you, you hopefully at that point that, you know, they, they've been able to walk, you know, mm -hmm. uh, walk on their own and do certain things on their own, but it's tough. And that's why I want to have a discussion with parents tonight mm -hmm. because, man, you got a lot of parents out there <clears throat> that are going through a lot of stressful situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still, damn, we had those conversations and shows about taking care of damn children when they're grown, mm -hmm. raising grandbabies, still doing stuff. Damn, they like you got a 30-year-old baby <laughs> at your house. At your house. You know what I'm saying? And what happens a lot of times, people will catch stuff that their kids know their kids wrong with and as adults, mm -hmm. but because they don't want to get embarrassment, they'll try to keep stuff in a certain way. Okay. Knowing it ain't right. No, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, do you really, should you really be paying rent for a 30 year old? <laughs> True. You know what I'm saying? That, that's not transitioning. You're right, that's like, not you know, going better. Yeah, you know, sometimes kids might go through Sunday. They might just got yeah, out of college, yeah, got their PhD or something. May have a health issue, right. may have went to a, a divorce or something like that, uh -huh. mom, dad helping them. But we talking about regular damn life. Yeah, Where you, day. Yeah, you sustaining them. Uh, and, 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 and doing that, and a lot of times people will do that because they don't want to look like, uh, I think, a failure in public. Mm. So, because of things like that happen, I want to have that, con that conversation tonight to talk with parents in regards to, like, look, let's look, we all a tribe, we all them go through different stuff with our, our kids. So, you know, you know, like I always say, you know, we're proud of them. You know, when they do their best, we'll post on social mm -hmm. media. Then they do wrong, we just like... That ain't my child. We disappear. Child. Well, shit, we just damn disappear. You just like your dad. Yeah, but you got to keep that same. <laughs> the thought process... He crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we still just want to keep that same energy in regards to how, you know, things... Uh, say it still didn't work. Still didn't work. Hold on, let me test. Okay. We're gonna, okay. we're gonna test it out. Six seven eight seven four zero nine eight nine four. Okay, we're gonna test it out, and I appreciate you letting me know that. Um, but when we talk about this, first thing I wanted to give you a couple of tips. But what I think everyone should be doing in regards to be able to assist people, in regards to uh, being able to help uh, handle disappointment from adult children. And I think the first thing the parents should do, you know, we talk about this is acknowledge your feelings. And what I mean by acknowledge your feelings, allow yourself to feel. It's natural to feel disappointed, but allow yourself to experience these emotions without guilt. Acknowledging your feelings is the first step toward coping with them. And so when you see your child go down a path, you know you done right. You know you told them what to do, right? And now they're getting in certain trucks, they're getting in certain things, certain things are happening and stuff. What's going on, Lab? You know, certain... Unless you're right, whoever they is right, it's not going through. It's not going through? Is there anything we can do? Okay, cool, cool. Well, sorry guys, the the call in not working tonight, but please leave your comments in the chat uh, with everything and stuff like that. We're gonna get get everything squared away for the next show. So if you do, if you can't call in, just um, um, leave your comments in the chat, and I'll recite them. I appreciate you letting me know that. Just woke up. I just, just woke up. Oh, um, yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. We adapt with soldiers, yeah. adapt and overcome. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. Not acknowledging acknowledging your feelings because a lot of times when you get hurt, especially by things that your children have done that you know they sh probably shouldn't have done, not probably you know they shouldn't have done, um, we can kind of lose ourselves. We kind of hide. Uh -huh. We embarrass. We we you know we hurt, and then you know people asking and stuff like that. Right. You know, I remember when my oldest boy got a. Um, Suspended. Mm -hmm. Senior year. Man, never got in trouble before in his life. Got suspended uh, uh, in college. Mm -hmm. And he was missing some games, and everybody called, and I'm mad as hell. But I went through the gamut. Embarrassed and all this other kind of shit. He couldn't play the frame. But what's he at? What's he at? What's he at? And I had at some point, like, look, that MF did it. Not me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because 
you know, again, I, and I ain't never been, anybody know me, I ain't never been that, my kids wouldn't do that. I, I ain't never been that daddy. Right. But I also never had to go through a lot of uh, embarrassment mm -hmm. with my children either, just keeping it real. And so now, this gentleman got suspended. He ain't playing, and everybody reaching out because everybody know I post stuff from the mm -hmm. games and stuff. Right. What T? What he at and everything? And I'm trying to. He ain't now. What I wasn't finna do, and I heard a family member did that. I wasn't finna lie. Oh, okay. Say he hurting shit. Right. He ain't playing. You know, you ask him. You know, I ain't gonna right. front his bed and stuff. Well, he he grown now, so I don't give a shit. Right. Give, you know, but 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 at that time I wasn't gonna lie. Right. Cause I heard somebody say, "Well, he didn't know the hell he ain't hurt. He ain't hurt. No, he ain't hurt. <laughs> He's not hurt. Okay, I wasn't finna damn lie. Right. But I say that to say, I was hurt. Mm -hmm. Bro, I done did all this stuff. You got everything laid out. Because one thing about it is that when we're younger and we make mistakes, we don't understand the magnitude of that mistake. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times with youth, we have that youth of ignorance. We don't think that." Um, a dumb or a careless mistake can have the same, it can have you know same big effect. impact. Same, yeah, same impact. So you could, and I try to tell this uh, uh, to kids all the time. Shout out to Tri Cities High School. We had a, uh, you know, me and the brother 100 we was out there talking to the kids yesterday. Okay. Up at Tri Cities High, and like I always say, it's not just bad people in jail. Mm -hmm. It's people that made mistakes. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. don't get it twisted, like. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Like, no, man. Like, it's some guys in there was in the wrong place, wrong time. Should have got out the car. Mm -hmm. Didn't you know, roll, with, roll that, with that guy. You yeah. know, right? You know what I mean? You know, hey, wrote a check and they had intentions of paying them. All kind of stuff. You mm -hmm. know, that they made a probably dumb decision, unwise decision, but they still in jail. And they're not bad. You know, in, in their mind, a lot of time, I'm not a rapist. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a robber. Um, that's what jail for. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they don't realize, like, it's, it's a place enough for people to make dumb mistakes place, as well. Yeah. Right? So that's why, you know, I try to get, you know, a lot of the kids to understand that, like, you know, we're, we're doing it. And so a lot, when your kids do particular things, like, um, make those kind of mistakes where you're like, man, why did this joker done got another baby? This mm. joker done got mm. locked up again, done got fired mm. again. And, and especially, when you see maybe peers, uh huh, you speaking my language, <coughs> and they kids, peers, they doing good. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they doing. like they, and you know you gave your kids the same, if not better than than they gave their kids. They kids, doctors and been in the military and doing great things, and here comes. <laughs> well, you know they have to. Big head, he he can't keep a job at McDonald's for less than two weeks, and you wonder what the heck, what the heck happened? Yeah, and oh. Uh, a lot of times when people don't necessarily put in that work like that with their kids made them sacrifices, you know, they can blow it off just like sometimes other than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But when you done made some real tough decisions and sacrifice for your mm -hmm. kids, it rub it rub you a little different. That's why I say so the first thing you gotta be able to acknowledge your feelings. Mm -hmm. And it hurt me, it bothered me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, just focusing on whatever people try to blow it off, just acknowledge that it did bother you. Mm -hmm. Right. The second thing is you gotta reflect your expectations. You gotta reflect your expectations, you know. Examine your expectations. Reflect on whether your disappointment stems from unmet expectations. Sometimes our children may have different paths or make choices that don't align with our hopes for them. Mm -hmm. And you gotta sit here and say sometimes, like, look, you may have been looking here and your kid is there. Mm -hmm. Or you up here and they got here, which is still good, mm -hmm. but your sights were there. I would be lying to you if I, if I could sit here and just say, like, yeah, my, like I said, I don't mind doing good, but I still have different kind of pathways mm -hmm. uh, with doing stuff, and I can just be straight up with that. I, 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 I remember sometimes I've heard, even with my kids, other people's kids, people will say, well, at least they're doing something. That bullshit. Right. Because one thing about it, I have high standards. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think my kids are, are not regular people or anything like that? They, they good kids, mm -hmm. but I, I, I set high standards and I set high bars. And if I, one thing about it, it's not an issue if they don't attain it, but I know they're working somewhere. And I ain't not fair. I right. ain't not fair with, with anything. And like I said, any one of my kids, can, it wasn't called anything. I ain't never been unfair, but I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm real with them. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, bro, 
Yeah, do this. This, why, this is a tiny. It really don't. It really doesn't. Nah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> That's cool. It was cool. I had it too. Uh, dang, that old age. It it's cool. In. Now we're talking about you know just just reflecting your expectation. Right, right. But when you you, you have that vision, you like look, man. This is what I'm expecting of you. Like that's what I was gonna say. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All parents should have high expectations of their children. It don't have to make it seem like your kids are better or, or whatever than anyone else's children. But if you put in the time, the effort, and and giving putting in the knowledge and pouring into them, you would expect them. You would and you would expect to have high expectations for them. Yeah. Just in general. Well, what I told you the other week, the standard is the standard. Look, bro, this is what we got to have and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, we can't achieve it. Uh -huh. How can we? Right. You know, Sex Redbone said, yes, it makes you uh, question what did you do wrong. And you have to sit here and say something to yourself, like, again, like, is it me mm -hmm. or is it them? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 and that's a good point because what I, I used to always think about when, uh, you just say athletics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I, I um, I played sports my whole life, and I know majority of damn parents out there didn't play sports. Mm -hmm. And they'll be sitting in the stands, typically somebody that played sports, that really played, at least to the, through high school. Mm -hmm. They understand the whole uh, concept of, you know, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Right. Typically, if you're playing a sport, you know, really, the only person that not make a mistake is the person in the game. Mm -hmm. Right? So right. that's going to happen. Right. So when I see parents looking at little league games, do this, do that, do this, do that. Like, huh? Yeah. And they hollering and stuff. Yeah, and they they, yeah, I know they ain't. You know, tell the kid, pass the ball, da, da, da. You know, they, and what my lens was, damn, I ain't even work my son on it. Mm. I ain't even go over there with him. I ain't even do that and stuff. And that what would get with me like, damn, you know, you know, sometimes somebody would like, man, he should have, he didn't know. Right, you can't expect them to know. And I do that with, with when I coach. When my coaches would, when I was head coach, and my coach would yell at a kid about something, I like, Coach, we ain't taught him that. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach, we can't really fuss at him like that. We ain't really taught him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and sometimes they'll, they'll sit there looking like, you know, you're right, Coach. Like, you want a kid to process something they ain't never seen before. You go to your job, and yo, your supervisor got expectations for you. Bro, we ain't never taught me that. You know, and, right. and, and you're looking at a child who doesn't have the maturity or the, the mental capacity to be able to do certain the things like that. Set. Yeah, exactly. And so that was one thing you always kind of get with me, like, did I go over it? Now, if I know I done taught you and you doing something, man, what the hell are you doing and right. stuff? But definitely, I, I would say to parents, you know, be able to reflect on your expectations. You know your child. Is it something that they capable of? Did you go over it with them and stuff? Be able to, you know, just be able to reflect on that and just say, okay, this realistic, unrealistic, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you want, you want to fuss at your kids by, dang, why you grazed this? Why you that? Did you get them? Did you sit up and read with them? Right. Did you get them a tutor? Right. Did you do everything that you, in your in, in your capacity, you know, and you know, some shit hereditary. Yeah. Mama, daddy, dumb. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff and Jeff and Chanel Taylor says, so, T. sometimes you have to let them see life. Yeah. Uh, Slick also said earlier, and I meant to read it, but I got thrown off with the phone. It said kids won't, kids won't hear their parents. Kids won't hear what their parents are saying, but their friends can say the exact same thing, and they'll hear that. Friends, and, and, and another tidbit, kids might not listen to you, but they damn sure watch you. You're right. You know, you're saying everything good or bad. Mm-hmm. You know, they still watching. True. You know, they, uh, we're doing certain things because you know, and and I think we all have to be kind of somewhat conscious of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, but but I do want any parent to kind of be thinking about when you actually setting these kind of expectations with your kids. Like, have you set everything up for them to be uh, successful? Right. And what you want them to be. Mm -hmm. You just can't be on a you know just figure it out. You know, some kids be honest with your dog like. They'll figure you it like, out. You be like, shit, I ain't do it. They be like, he's so smart. I ain't got shit to do with that. I know damn well. I don't know where the hell he get it from. Oh, we take credit for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We what, take credit but, for but, that. But, no, no, but real talk, though, you be like, sometimes you be like, they sharp. Mm -hmm. And then someone be like, look, man, I know you know better. But that's the thing where we got to sit here and just be able to reflect. Did I do everything possible? When we talk about how to be able to deal with disappointment for adult children. We got to sometimes own what we didn't do. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Just, right. you know, like, look, did we do everything we could have did? to teach them 
or, 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 or implement, you know, uh, work ethic. Okay. You know, thinking, mm -hmm. decision making, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Instead of just assuming that they would do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Right. So that just gotta have that kind of little come to Jesus moment with yourself and uh, and really just, you know, just just figure, you know, answer that question, right? Mm -hmm. Again, we're talking about how to deal with adult uh, disappointment with adult children, mm -hmm. how to deal with disappointment with adult children. Right now, stream live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. Again, it's Change the Live, hosted by your Trilla Deontay Bird. Feel free to leave your comments in the comment section, you know, as we go. The third thing, is practice empathy and understanding. Practice empathy and understanding. Mm -hmm. You gotta put yourself in their shoes. Try to understand their perspective and the choices they've made. Empathy can help you see the situation from their point of view. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, well look, let me think. He is five. Mm -hmm. Or he had a, a rough day at school. That's one thing about a lot of times with, uh, with children. Uh, my oldest boy as a young daddy how the hell you didn't? How the hell you failed? How the hell you failed the test? Or uh, uh, what you not doing this, that in school? I used to be real. What would I think it? This, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't, I wasn't old enough. You know, I'm here in my damn mid twenties. Mm -hmm. So you sitting there like, I, I, I wasn't mature enough to understand like, um, um, uh, stuff happens. Right. Well, as I know, like, when we'll come in. We're thirteen. And then we was up, we was up last night, or we had to take care of something or whatever. Mm -hmm. So from a common sense standpoint, I understand because. The same situation reversed on me. Like, I can't have, uh, expect, if I've been doing something all the day before, or we just have been out with the family, and I knew I had an assignment to turn in. Mm -hmm. If I didn't take the time to do that, like I said, man, I was busy yesterday. Right. I can have the same realistic thing of my son. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And just be able to see him, just be able to, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Okay. Understand. And from that point, and being straight up, Look, bro, I'm looking at it, you know, talk to you, you know, talk to me, what's going on? You know, son, you bullshitting, you know, talk to your daughter, say, hey, look, now, hey, now, because one thing I was about, when my kids will say something about grades, well, the first question out my, out my mouth, well, you know, you know, you hear like that, um, you know, the, the test is hard, we couldn't do this, that, and that. I said, son, the people pass the test. What do you mean? I said, the people pass the test. Right. If people pass the test, if all y'all failed it, I get it. It's different. But if people pass the test, that means it was passable. <laughs> it wasn't an unpassable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So right. again, so the people that pass the test, uh, I mean, they smart. They smarter than you. Mm -hmm. This, that, and that. Now you sitting there. Well, no, no, no. But did they just? I, well, how did they do it? And what? What? What didn't you do? Right. I mean, was it something? Just what is it? And that's why we you know we have to sit down and make sure that our kids learn accountability. Uh, Ms. Mixlot says that being realistic and compassionate means a lot in parenting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, again, I think that we think that a lot of times people uh, move from the standpoint that they want a certain, they want their kids to do a certain thing, but they don't want to, to put the time in to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And, again, sometimes our kids can grow up and we don't put that much into them. You're like, man, wow, I don't know where you got it from. Right. Well, then a lot of times they just don't. They just don't. Mm -hmm. You sit there now, they out there, and I, I was listening to a park, um, TikTok earlier. Pro athletes were talking about how they got their money, but they just didn't damn know. Mm -hmm. They were saying, man, nobody talked to me. I got this money, whatever, this, that, and that. And I don't think that's outrageous to expect you get a 21 year old, you know, five, ten million dollars, and then they're going to make smart, smart decisions, decisions with it. Right. That's, you know, that's asinine. Because mm -hmm. if I get that to a 40, 50, you know, because I hear adults. Um, guys, 40, 50 years old, 60 years old, in, in, a, in a cigar shop. Man, how do you guys had all that money go broke? Same way you ain't got it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, if right. you don't know, you don't know. Right. You know, and and, 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 and I just think that two people win lottery and go broke. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, you know, you really don't really know how to make do do with money until you get a hand and messed it up. Mm -hmm. You can go back and get it back. You know, right. not in all cases, but. Uh, Many of cases, you got to kind of get out there and get it and, right. and, 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 and go through that learning curve. But that's why I want people to just think about just when we start talking about uh, practice empathy and understanding, just put yourself in their shoes and have an open communication. Mm -hmm. Encourage open and honest communication. Have a respectful, have a respectful conversation with your adult child about their choices and decisions and listen without judgment. Mm -hmm. Listen without judgment. Man, I'm going to tell you something. Um... When your child becomes an adult, they are an adult. 
That's it. And, and, and it's one thing you checking them or whatever. Hey, man, they done got a DUI or something like that. Yeah, you go through that. But really and truly, you got to sit here and have a conversation. Like, look, let me res let me talk to you mm -hmm. instead of me yelling at you. Right. And everything. Because, again, you can castracize them emasculate them and everything like that and they just like they focusing on the rah, 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 rah. Mm -hmm. it's just like you Charlie Brown teacher <laughs> and wah, wah, wah. exactly right, right, right. and you have a great message and, you know as a as a, a football coach that was one thing that I was very very conscious of because I probably from that last era of the the, the hidden coaches okay hit you or whatever this that and that and they fussing and cussing you still didn't know what the hell to do right we probably more mentally tough but again, the, your message get lost in the delivery. In the delivery, yes. And we have to make sure that you have to understand because you may have gave you you may have said something in your delivery that was just misconstrued, mm -hmm. and you can't assume that. Or uh, sometimes every, you know we have to understand everybody don't think the same. Mm -hmm. We see, may have uh, have an idea of the the, the correct destination, right? But as far as processing, you know, how we're going to go about it to get there, be totally different. So you got to sit there and listen. And, and sometimes, you know, my kids be like, "Hey, Daddy, just listen." My bad, dog. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, yeah. and, and just and let them say everything in their entirety. Mm -hmm. You know, I got grown kids, right? So I, I got to sit here like, bro, talk to me, mm -hmm. say what they got to say and everything. Because what you don't want to have happen is. Your child do not want to talk with you because of lack of respect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No way. Now you can understand the apprehension they may have because they disappointed that they let you down, mm -hmm. but they just don't want to talk to you because your ass just gonna cuss or whatever. Man, that's just something you don't even want to have happen. Right. You know, and they're like, why you didn't come to me? Why this? Why? Right. Why would I? Why Who the hell want to come out? to you? Right. right. Exactly. Uh, uh, not because you made a mistake. It's just like I just didn't want to go. Yeah, go through that process. Now, I will say this as a parent: don't compromise. Um, don't compromise being honest because you're worried about their feelings. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to them kids at Tri Cities yesterday. A couple of young boys, you know, when they heard a couple things, they got you know doing this, and you know they get the, you know everybody got all these damn bushes and twisting yeah. their hell. What the fuck? Well, anyway, but um, they were doing that. And I had to I had to say, guys, listen, we all family. Mm -hmm. Y'all got y'all men. And it's not a slight on ladies, but y'all men. Y'all look tough skin. Mm -hmm. You gonna hear some shit you don't wanna hear. Right. I got OGs. You got OGs. Mm -hmm. And my OGs have said some stuff that not to demean me, call me a SOB or MF or whatever, but say some stuff that kinda like, hey, Poochie, you messed up. Mm -hmm. And I gotta be able to sit here and just be like, Man, I didn't like it. But at least that's my OG. You gotta take it in. Exactly. And a lot of times people, you know, that, that's a real big part of maturity, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm probably a little more tougher because I did play sports and I was in the military as far as taking certain things. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm, and anybody know, I'm a big proponent. I don't believe in cursing you. I might curse when I talk, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I at all disrespect people. Right, right. I don't never, my kids included, mm -hmm. we, ain't, we don't do that. Okay. That was one of my rules. I put my kids with younger. We don't front on each other and do that. But I'm finna get it to you straight up and raw. <laughs> you finna right. get it that way. Right. And we don't need to be what well, you could have said it this way. No, MF, I said, said it the, the way, way I, I said it. Said it. You're right. You know my rule, lab. Don't ever leave a conversation where a person don't know where you stand. Right. And don't you leave that conversation when you don't know what they saying. Mm -hmm. Cause I ain't, me and Lab ain't finna talk. Well, I, I think he meant no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Find out what he said. Right. And then when people tell say something to me about well you you, you made it seem like no no I said what I said. Mm -hmm. Damn all what you want to. You took it. Yeah. In. How you know? No. Yeah. I said what I said. Mm -hmm. No confusion. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to sit here and just have that you know open communication, man. Just be able to, to rap with your kids. So many parents, so many parents lose their kids because they can't communicate. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk to your adult child like they four years old. Mm. You can't. Yeah. You can't. You and know, it, I'm telling you who, who did that really well. You know, Slick talked to her son like hard, but he was a good. He, he's a good. You know what I'm saying? He's a good child. Like she gave it to him, like you said, rough, rugged, and raw, <laughs> just straight out. It is what it is. But he would talk to her about anything. It was no question about who he was coming to first. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. 
I get what you're saying because I've seen it firsthand. Yeah, I, I, I take a lot of pride in my kids coming to me with uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. And uh, has it bothered me? Not because they did it, but you know, sometimes, you know, your kid, my mom uh, went through stuff a couple weeks ago. Your mind be focused on what you got to do. Right. Here, this shit come along with your kid. Right. They throw your whole thing off of what you got to do. But at the end of the day, I don't want my kid out there dealing with stuff. You know that, the, the, you know, daddy, you know, big dog can come help you out with that mm -hmm. and stuff. But you, you, you can be reluctant to say something to you mm -hmm. because of how you gonna handle them. Right. Am I gonna chump you off? Like, look, daddy, hey, shit, I am on here on my own. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't really bug. And I can say that. My kids, they don't really bug me about nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really tripping. So I have to be, you know, conscious of that. Not that we have issues, but, um, you know, I know if I could be a different way, they wouldn't want to come to me at all. But I do think a lot of times parents have to really, really keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And if you do feel like your child that is an adult is not moving like an adult, you got to reassess some things. Right. I get it. I get, I, I, I get it. That, hey, man, you're not on it, this, that, and that. Why they ain't doing it? And, 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 and maybe some stuff that totally out of what you've done, you've raised them with, or whatever. But that's why we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. That's why we're having this conversation to be able to do it. Because you can't make your child listen to you. You can't make somebody uh, uh, be ambitious. Right. You can't make somebody want to take initiative. Right. You know what I mean? At some point, they got to be able to just, I'm going to go do this myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you, But if you sitting there still trying to, uh, do certain things for them that they, you know, I'm going to fill out this for you. I'm going to call this person for you. Right. You know, me and my, me and my kids talk about, hey, well, listen, I, I know my partner. You need his little internship or this job. I'm going to call him, let him know you're going to call him, but you're going to talk. Right, right. You know, these are the, you know, you want to get a job, you go fill out that application. If you got questions or you want me to review it, I, I do, can do that. that part, yeah. But I'm not doing shit for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna fill out that application for me. Hell, no. Oh, no. pop. Man, let me tell you something. I feel, man. My any one of my kids will tell you since they at least 15. I ain't feel like no damn paperwork. Let me look over it. Mm. Let me look over. I look it over. Right. You know, matter of fact, when they that young, I need to look over it. But they get older now. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I ain't asking. You know, I ain't speaking nobody for you. If I make a connection, hey man, my man, look for you to call and listen before I. Reach out to that person. Right. Is is your shit together before then? <laughs> right, right. Because don't have me vibe don't have for you. Have me embarrass yourself. myself. Exactly. Right. But straight up, I'm not. You know, you, you, have you ever known people to call somebody about that kid, knowing the kid gonna do wrong? Mm -hmm. Hell no. No man, I had a part of mine reach out my my older son. He was kind of going through his growing pains. But of mine say, man, I got a spot. Hey, bro. Nah. You nah. You ready right now? Yeah. He ain't ready right now. And, and ain't hey, for hey, him. And, and, ain't I, for hey, him. Hey, hey, and you see, I ain't even joking about right, this. Nah, right. he, he ain't ready right now. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to mess up no relationships because, you know, they, they do something and then they can't finish it through or whatever. Now, I'm telling you now. But, you know, when they ready, you know, hey, I seen you there. I'm mm -hmm. sitting there or whatever. I'll talk to you and everything. But I ain't, ain't, ain't going to do that. But definitely, guys, parents, make sure you try your best to have open communication with your children. Again, we're talking about how to deal with disappointment with adult children. And the next one is very important. Mm -hmm. Very important because, again, it goes back to the vision we have for our children and then their reality. And that's respecting their autonomy. Oh. Respecting their autonomy. Recognize that your children have independence. Mm. Adult children have their own lives, their own goals, and decisions that they want to make. Uh -huh. Respect their autonomy and support their right to to live their lives as they see fit, uh -huh. even if it differs from your expectations. Uh, uh. Now here's the deal: <laughs> I understand uh. that if your child telling me telling you they grown, uh -huh. but you still taking care of them. Right. I get it. <laughs> I get it. That's the difference. But you got to be very honest with your child. You want me to give you the respect as an adult. But you want to move like a child. Mm -hmm. At some point, at some point, as the parent, you gotta just say, "Look, look, you want me to give you that shit? You got do to, that. You gotta be it. You yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, 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 you can't have wrong man expectations for yourself 
as a young man or a young lady and you want to move like a child yeah pay you know what i'm saying i don't mind you utilize me but you can't use me that's the I, I you know i'll assist you but i ain't subsidizing you yeah that's how the, the hell i gotta yell yeah, i can't you know you don't want me checking stuff you don't want me doing that all this kind of stuff people will say well look they need their privacy and all that privacy you something you pay extra for at a hotel <laughs> Privacy come with prices. Yeah, but but but, but so so for for even when we say that we can't be sitting here catching our kids and, and doing certain things like that and allowing them to throw that back at us uh -huh. like shit. I'm grown. Be grown. Right. Okay. Cool. You right. You right. Don't have, grown. don't have me pay for shit. <laughs> don't have me pay for a damn thing. We'll do that. And and parents, be okay. Be okay with your decision. Well, they don't, if I don't do that, then how they gonna do that? Shit, let them figure out. They say they grown. <laughs> <laughs> they that's the hard, I think that's the hardest part. Shit, let me tell you something. Letting our, let our children figure out, well, knowing they're going the wrong way. Knowing the path that they're about to walk down is a bumpy one. My oldest son moved out of my house. Everybody asked me, you know where you going? You ain't worried. I was worried, but I knew that I've been more damn stressed out with another grown man in my house acting like he tell me what the damn do. Right. No. Slick <laughs> say you can't be grown and I'm paying all the bills. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how many people say, I mean, uh, uh, living on their parents' roof and like I'm grown, I can do this and come and in. And, and, like they paying bills. Yeah. I ain't thinking about it. Mm. And then the parents are just stressed the hell out. He don't need help out with that. He just come in, he just do this. Bush, no, oh. <laughs> not to say not punchy. Shit, no. <laughs> and I ain't trying to flex on them. But the truth is the truth, right? Yeah, but I'm. But but, but what they say, I'd be lying if I sat there and said that. Uh, I don't be worried or whatever and everything. But at the end of the day, I had one of my platoon sergeants say something to me that always stuck with me. Uh, um, he said. Sorry, 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 Debo. You know, I'm a Facebook friend. I don't know if he looking at the show or not, but Debo said something this was back when I was in Germany. And he said, Man, we was just at one of those, uh, one of them Switzer, Schnitzel houses or whatever, drinking some uh, snaps. Mm -hmm. He said, Man, do you have you ever thought about how frightened your parents were when you left? Mm -hmm. And I never thought about that. You'd be so engaged in yourself. You never think about how frightened, frightened. your parents are mm -hmm. to just let you out into the world. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing, you get children, you the same way. But at the end of the day, they got to let you go. A little bird, a bird going to be, you know, they, they hatch the eggs. The little birds, at some point, they just jump out. They don't live with their mamas no more. They just go out and live on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, when in any the animal. Bird push them out the nest, well, don't they? Well, you see that. In any animal, in the animal kingdom, They'll nurture them mm -hmm. at some point, but at some point they got to get out there on their own. They walk away. Yeah, and humans, you got to say the same thing. We scared, we love our children, but at some point you got to sit there and say, well, look, let me go do, let you do your thing. Mm -hmm. Now you come back, you know, I keep, you know, get some game or whatever. If you need me, I'm here. But a lot of times you'll see parents still keeping their kids at a certain point to protect the kids mm -hmm. uh, because of the parents fear of the kids going through something right well, where they gonna stay or how they gonna eat or whatever they're like shit i um i remember when uh we was in germany i was in germany you know every time every now and then i could call back home you know and everything and say uh you no know, grandmama mama y'all send me some money whatever right right whatever you know with, uh the wire you know mm -hmm. wire the money you know i think with money gram and all that stuff back then but they told me one time, I we done went to, me and my partners done went to the club, uh -huh. I done tricked off all my money. <laughs> and I called home, I, I, ain't, I couldn't wash my clothes, I ain't no money for that lab. Uh -huh. My mama said, uh, said Pooch, I ain't got it. And I heard my mama say to my grandma, Mama, Pooch ain't got no money. My grandma was like, I ain't got shit either. Uh -huh. And I was like, they really ain't got no money. Right. And I ain't got no money. <laughs> what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And at that point, lab, that shit hit me like, but they ain't got no money. You're right. I can't do this shit no more. I ain't really. I, my partner ain't got no gotta money. Get it together. I can't go to mama. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. that, it scared the shit out of me. Like, I 
I ain't got no safety net. Right. It was me. Uh-huh. And uh, from that damn point in my life, I ain't never just, you know what I'm saying? They hit me like, like you know what I'm saying? They, they didn't have nothing to give me. Right. And I'm talking, I'm hungry. <laughs> Hungry, man. But you in the military, you in Germany, seeing the world. Oh, shit, boy, you should have had them kind of issues. Shit, I'm blowing through that money, boy. <laughs> Friday night at the Seven Hill NCO Club. <laughs> Party over hell. Shit, boy, it wasn't that Big booties and drinks, and that money going real quick, bro. <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? And my mama said that, but that was one of the best things that happened in my life. Uh-huh. Because at that point, I was accountable for Poochie. You know what I mean? Right. And so I, I really needed to, 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 to go through that. And far too often, so many parents don't want their kids to be out there hungry yeah. or be out there cold. You know what I'm saying? That's it. You know what I'm saying? And, and we'll go through all kind of stuff because, not because they couldn't get their kids something because their kids bad decision making. Right. I didn't have, I was like you just, everything you just said. I was in the military. I was in Germany. I'm right. out of seeing the world. Why the hell I'm calling my mama exactly. as my mama for money? Right. But my dumb ass out here want to say I here party and chase women and everything. You're not thinking and about tomorrow. I ain't thinking about it. Right. But then, you know, I had to go through that. From that point forward, I never have done that, dog. Mm-hmm. I had to go, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there are so many adults out here that have never went through that. Not just adults, adults with children. Mm-hmm. Adults that are parents that are still going back to their parents. Mm-hmm. Mama, mama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. Real talk. Got their parents taking care of their kids. Mm-hmm. They, because a lot of times the parent they want the kid to, to suffer, go through something. To suffer something. You know what I'm saying? To there you go. Set back. Yeah. It's suffer, hey, suffering is a good teacher. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey. That stomach growl long enough, shit. <laughs> you sitting over there, man, trying to figure out, man, but you can put a little sugar on some paper. That's <laughs> <laughs> a friend. It's a like a sandwich to me. Uh, Slick say parents letting their kids do too much nowadays. And if they can smoke, eat, drink, have sex at the parents' house, why should they move out? Hey man, for real. Right. For real. But like I said, again, a lot of times just parents just don't want to lose that control. To lose that control. Again, the night show we're talking about, we're talking about how to deal with disappointment from adult children. Uh, Jeff and, and, and Chanel Taylor says, I surely have been there and I learned quick. <laughs> Hey man, T was in Germany partying with me. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> That's my okay. dog. That explains it. Hey, <laughs> hey T, T has on that. T my, has on that hey, Germany too. Hey, my very first night in Germany. <laughs> very first night. That's my big brother. <laughs> bro, come on, I got you. <laughs> hey. Hey, my very first, first night, night in the country. Okay. Bro, I got you. That was my big brother. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, lamb fresh. Green. Straight off the boat. Hey, that, that, <laughs> hey, that's my dog. Took care of me, boy. Hey, hey, T, hey, my very first night. Hey, y'all, y'all ready to go out? Y'all ready? Uh-huh. Hey, boy, it was on and popping. <laughs> That my very first night. T, T was a bad influence. Hey, no, 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 no. Let me tell with. you something. That brother, let me tell you something, man. Taylor taught me. He taught me one thing that has stuck with me the rest of my life. Me and that brother used to go party. But when I say work like a mule, uh-huh. work. Uh-huh. So he taught me one important thing. We party all night long because uh-huh. I worked under him. Uh-huh. And we that next morning, Gotta do it. It, it wasn't no, no excuse. man, I'm tired. No excuse. So I'm talking about he taught me at an early age, work hard, play hard. Oh, and that brother worked. And uh-huh. that, that, that always stuck with me because I had a couple other partners in other platoons. Uh-huh. They didn't have a cat like him. Okay. So me, we were party. He took us out. But that morning, it's right? back hey, in it was no, it wasn't no play thing, <laughs> huh? And I'm talking about soon work up, we go party again. <laughs> but it was just, and, and like I said, man, it was a, uh, uh, T was very, very instrumental. You know what I'm saying? Just my girl, I just remember that. Like uh-huh. we would get to it, like uh-huh. party hard. And I'm talking about go in, get back three in the morning, formation at five. Ooh. And I'm Ooh. talking about and and work, work, uh-huh. work, work, dog. And uh, but that was he was very like, hey. This is how we do it. It right. wasn't no, uh, uh, hey man, let kind of, you know, take naps, take, take a break. break. <laughs> Shit. But he, uh, he taught me that very early on, man. I, I'm always gonna appreciate that brother for that because that that Sunday that had always stuck with me. That hey, listen, man, you had your fun, man, but handle your business, 
Don't let your business handle you. And I've always talked that. I've talked that to all my children. Party, have your fun, but take care of your business first, man. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought of T, man. That my first night, and I'm talking about, hey, work hard, play hard. Right. That always stuck with me. La, uh, la, la, I'm sorry if I said the name wrong. The Tivia Morgan Morgan mm -hmm. says, uh, "Well, control these wanna be friend parents are cool with their with their." Are cool with that laying up, smoking, drinking, cussing them out in their own home. Well, see the thing. The thing of it is, I think with, with, with parents, a lot of times as parents, we when we look at our parents, we look at all the things that we okay were okay with, mm -hmm. and it didn't hurt us. And then we look at the things that we weren't okay with our parents did that kind of rubbed us wrong way. So we'll say, "Excuse me, I'm not going to do that." Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna fuss, I ain't gonna put them on punishment, I ain't gonna whoop them. Excuse me. And that shit might not work for your child. Mm -hmm. But because you didn't like it, your child may need it. Right. Just being straight up. Right. And so you say, okay, well look, I'm gonna be more of a friend of my kid. My mom and daddy wouldn't do it. You know, a lot of times stuff is generational or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm most raised by my grandfather, which uh, my granddaddy loved me, but he from that old school. It wasn't old. I love you. Uh, ain't no hugging and all yeah, that. Nah, yeah, mine the everything. same way. And um, um, I'm probably a little bit more affectionate with my children, but there's some things that I don't compromise with my kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, I, I, I ain't never been the one to drink or smoke. Right. Like, I ain't never been the one to do that and yeah. stuff like that. Who want to part um, with their children anyway? Well, well, let me say that, like, I'm totally against it. But I never try to tell people how to raise their kids. Uh -huh. But what I will say is you got to be realistic about what you don't like still might be the best thing. And that's what I was trying to get when I was talking to those kids yesterday. That we talking, y'all, you might hear some shit you don't like. Mm -hmm. I talk to my OGs now. Mm -hmm. Damn, I ain't really want, you know, I might have wanted a little bit of pity party. <laughs> and, no. <I'm> no. <laughs> and sometimes you got to just be, you know, have enough thick skin to understand that somebody care about what well, they're saying. They still got your best interest in mind. Uh -huh. And they ain't going to call you, especially when we start talking about young men. Uh -huh. Like, you know, you being too rough and all that kind of stuff. You being too rough, but the world going to be ferocious. Because they don't care nothing about it. You know what I mean? And there are so many times people make excuses. How many times, you know, and, and again, this is going to rub some people the wrong way. We got kids that unfortunately may have lost their lives dealing with police or dealing with other people doing some wrong shit. Mm -hmm. They were robbing somebody. They were stealing something and everything. Police shot them. Another person shot them. And people like, they didn't have to do my baby like that. Mm -hmm. But the baby doing some wrong stuff. Right. And because... They probably went handling right in the, the legal manner. People don't want to own that. But because, you know, the kids still doing something wrong, they still shouldn't have did that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Man, I've seen plenty of documentary folks like, yeah, they was a good kid, they was doing it. I mean, are you just trying to get a damn settlement? <laughs> right. Because you know your kid was effed up. Right. The greater piece of society, nobody say the shit you saying about your child. Right, and I know. Let me give you a good example. I know, and this was a different time, of course, because I'm older. But I know I was a terror as a child. Mm -hmm. I know I was. Even as a child, I knew I was a terror. But I was a terror to the to a to a line. Yeah. Like I know if I step over this line, I might go to jail, get dead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I was a terror up to that line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my grandma told you, he was bad as hell. Ain't nothing I can say, but she right, cause yeah. I was right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause but you I know, know how I was. Right, I knew how far to go. So, and the, and the child know that they bad as hell. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. children know that they being bad. They know they're not doing the right things when they out in these streets and doing other, they know this. But, like you said, the parenting is just not as I, stable as it needs to be. I, ain't it amazing how somebody can go to jail and learn how to follow rules? Mm -hmm. Ain't it amazing? And at the end of the day, the world is based off of order. Right. Right? Follow the rules, do this, that, and that, and all that kind of stuff. And we ain't trying to go into those conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, you work hard, take care of your family, whatever. You can't take my shit because your ass don't want to do it. Right. If you got something that I don't have, and unfortunately at this time, I, you know, I got laid off, I just still can't take your shit. Right. I can't take your stuff. Right. I can't break in your house. You know what I'm saying? Right. You work hard for you. I don't have it right now. I need it, but I can't take it. Mm-hmm. 
and it's not justification for that. You know what I mean? Like, like I worked hard and you know, it. you 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 know, this is a free country. You feel a certain way. You say what you want to say. I can't slap the shit at you mm -hmm. because you don't. You know, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. It's it's yeah. Certain the certain lines you can't cross. Yeah. You and know, you should know not to cross. Peep, peep. We about to say. Uh, La Latavia, and I'll say if What's I up, Tay? Latavia Morgan mm -hmm. says, I have some folks who party with their children to the point that the mother and daughter are pregnant at the same time. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> she comes a damn lifetime shit. <laughs> And we're talking about uh, but, I deal with disappointment of adult children. Hell, I think that's a damn disappointment with a damn adult parent. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm say this much. When there's been times like me and Sick go to a club and her son will walk in the club and she be like, let's go. And I'm like, why? why we, well, I mean, we like literally just walked in there. And she like, Carlos just came here. We can't, we can't be in here with him. We can't party with him. Like, And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, to that point, like I'm not gonna be in this club and my son in this club too. You get what I'm saying? You know, you know, Lab. It's funny you say that because my younger sister, I've pretty much been like her father. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and she look at me like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody know that with me. You know, me and Little Bit, but uh, Little Bit walk in the club. I got to go. Uh huh. I gotta go. Hey man, my sister here. But I, I gotta go. Right. I got to go. <laughs> Hell no. Right. I right. still have a crew. Where you going, bro? Where you going, bro? I'm out. I got to go. <laughs> I got to damn go. Right, right. Uh, 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 so I definitely know. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Six said, come back to the mic. I'm sorry. But that was one of the things, like, hey, when I seen that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I had to leave, man. Mm -hmm. I had to sit there just because well, I didn't want to be in that. I right. didn't want certain lines get crossed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know that's my sister. I know how she look at me right. and everything. I didn't want some things to get compromised, right. you know, uh, w with certain things. And so you got to sit here and just kind of be realistic about it. Because that's why we talked about earlier. Parents got to be realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to own what you ain't did. Mm -hmm. You know, and there, you, you got to own what you show. Yeah. And, and, and be willing to go through the pain and the sacrifices to probably correct that bad behavior action. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people want to do that. He is doing this. He doing that. We get, we do everything. She that ain't work. He doing exactly what you taught him to do. Taught him to or do, not or, him to do. Or, or, or didn't correct. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because you know, again, you, you you we got you do have that out there, but I don't think most parents want to raise their kids to be a criminal. Well, let me ask you a question. While we're talking about that, do you uh, speaking of that, most parents don't want. Do you? Well, at what point? At what point? Do the kids take up responsibility for their own actions? The kids are when, guys. When the, when the parents, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, when the parents are telling them to do certain things and they still ignoring it, and then they get in trouble, at, and then they want to call mom and daddy, at what point do the kids, let's just say, breaking the car, something happens. When they get ready to open that car door, knowing that it's wrong, knowing that it's illegal, knowing that something could happen to them, and they decide to do it, and something does happen to them, at what point does it become their responsibility to do the right thing and the parents did all they, all, all they could? I mean, at what point does that happen? It's always, the kids always got to be able to be accountable for what they do. Mm -hmm. The problem come up is the parents don't never want, necessarily want their kids to go through the consequences of their bad decision making. I, I get that, but I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, even if the parents don't want them to go through the consequences, they're taking care, they're doing whatever they can to make sure they don't go through the consequences, and the child decides to go through the consequences on their own. But, but that's what I'm saying, Lab. They still got to own it. Mm -hmm. But what happens is a lot of times, they, they don't necessarily have to go through the consequences. Because, you know, again, let me get you out of jail. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do that. So you really just begin to slap on hands. Until the parent can't not help you okay. anymore. Okay. So the kid got to, from the get-go, again, it goes back to as a parent. How, much, how, how afraid can you let yourself be to let your kid go through something? Yeah, we're talking about adult children at this point. So yeah, we're we, we talking about grown they ass folks. They definitely should know right from wrong. You know, stealing, making babies, writing checks, mm -hmm. doing all, whatever. Mm -hmm. Anything that they know they ain't supposed to do, right. not working. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, that at some point, the parent got to be sitting there and say, well, look, my feel 
of me me taking your care of your ass forever is greater then, than my fear of your ass, you know, having to go through jail or all this other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and and unfortunately, a lot of times people don't really go through. You know, you can't do it until they just they can't get in a situation they can't help. Right. That's really how it goes. Right. Most of the time, lad. Right. The kid got to know it from the get-go. Mm -hmm. It's just how much a parent is willing, because of their fear, mm -hmm. to let the child go through that. You oh, dig okay. what I'm saying? I don't want my... Hey, man, I get scared just like any other parent. My kid right. got to go through something. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So I'm not trying to say it, but, but it, at the end of the day, shit, I can't be taking care of this stuff forever. You know I, what I mean? I say how... How much better is it for you as a parent to take care of the things for your children so they don't have to go? I'm going to give you a good example. Me and you, I was raised by my grandmother pretty much. My mom wasn't a preacher, but my grandma them didn't have no money. Mm -hmm. they could. I do for a fact that if I went to jail, I was sitting in jail. You get what I'm saying? Like, there was no, there was no question mark because my grandmother's not trying to get mad. She's trying to figure out what we're going to eat today. You get what I'm saying? So that added stress, she would probably let it go. And I feel like that to me helped me a lot because I knew I was gonna, gonna I was gonna be and, I, and let me Man. let me get it together early. My granddaddy W C Burden dead and gone, but he looked straight in, straight in my eyes. You start something, don't get your ass locked up. I ain't getting your ass out of jail. Uh -huh. And I knew he meant it. Because <laughs> he said it. And, and he meant it, and I knew that nobody had no money. Mm -hmm. I ain't putting my house off your ass. Mm -hmm. And I knew he meant that. So that's why I'm going up and down bankhead, cutting grass, right. doing fast food. I never sold though. Right. I ain't knocking I, yeah, nobody. I whatever, whatever decision you make, deal with the consequences. Right. Now it is, you know, you grow up in the neighborhood, you respect the game. Whatever you do, that's you. That's you. Whatever. Right. I, I did things, you know. what I'm saying I might, you know, just maybe chase women or right. do this, that, and that shit I wasn't supposed to dang do, you know, in excess or whatever. Right. Whatever I can deal with consequences come out of it. If you sit there and you want to do, rob. Sell dope, whatever, be able to deal with the consequences. But I know that man was very, very serious when he, when said. he said that. So I just never, you know what I'm saying? But my thing, I just like working and making money. That's just mm -hmm. never my thing, again, with doing that. Six Redbone says, I don't think never, what is it? I don't think never, but I think we as parents blame ourselves for the kids' actions or choices. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, parents carry a, a certain guilt. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's warranted, sometimes it ain't. Mm -hmm. You know, and everything. I think what at, at the end of the day, um, once our children become adults, again, we're talking again, how to handle a little disappointment with adult children. Once, at some point, if our kids are adults, they got to do stuff on their own. Mm -hmm. And you might have some, you know, some group stuff that y'all can try to work on together. But when they grow, they grow. Mm -hmm. And the majority you know, of that it, stuff, they got to work on it, themselves. It, exactly. Exactly. Like, when we would sit here and talk to some of the kids and they'll say, well, look, I didn't have a, one of the biggest things, especially with a lot of young men, is they throw the, the universe one. I didn't have a father figure. And the thing of it is, is, is when I hit up the thing about somebody says they didn't have a father figure, you really don't know what you would have got. Mm -hmm. You got a 50-50 chance. I love my daddy to death. Everybody know my daddy. Great guy, this, that, and that. Daddy Street dude. Mm -hmm. So you sitting there like, shit, he, and, and I think now he's older out of guilt. Man, I wish I'd have been out, but mm -hmm. shit worked out. Right. Because if I had your ass around. <laughs> no telling. Well, man, no damn telling. But at the end of the day, like, I'm, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, people don't want to sit there and just, you know, uh, own that they made bad decisions. A good, you know, it's a lot of kids out here that got a daddy or a mama that actually have been very detrimental to mm -hmm. their growth. Right. There's a lot of kids out there got both parents or got everything down, and they still make bad decisions, right? They've been very active and very supportive. At the end of the day, your decision your decision. I say this all the time, lad, that, you know, and I was talking to one of my partners, man. Uh, shout out my boy Josh coming with my teammates. And we had uh, Josh's uh, son birthday. Little Josh's birthday was uh, a couple weeks. And I had to just tell Josh, because he was, Teenage father, like man, I I really admire you know how mm -hmm. you move. You know mm -hmm. I never told him, but he was like I had a you know Jack job was telling me like you know you had a solid mom and grandma, but I always say bro at the end of the day you had to listen to him. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. Even when, no matter what infrastructure you have. Right. And that's great because a lot of times people say well I didn't have this that that but they have something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Right. You still got to listen to them. Right. It's and that's somebody the there. It's somebody there. Somebody there, you know what I'm saying? Some I'm, people don't, and I get it. But a lot of times, somebody's there. You got to make a decision to listen to them. Yeah, I don't. I'm not a big proponent of that. I'm a product of my environment type stuff because it's a cop out. It, yeah, it is because for me, growing up and 
I didn't have a mama or a daddy. Pretty much, I never knew my dad, so we always have to had that discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't know who he is today. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom was very un, you know, was not around much at all. So, and I lived in the, on the west side, of ghetto Chicago. So I could easily say, "Oh, I have a mom and daddy." It took me down this road, but those things in itself, as a person, the person, the individual, has to take over and decide what they want out of their lives. They can't just lay on the, I don't have a mom or dad to show me because to be honest with you I didn't have that either but I knew the path I wanted to take and it damn sure wasn't the path that they were taking me on yeah. you get what I'm saying yeah I knew that I needed to do something better yeah and, and that's one of the things I think as a parent you got to be able to sit here and just say well look I tried my best mm -hmm. I made this mistake here and there and there own that for yourself but you gotta say at some point like look man <laughs> this one you know what I mean because right. they got to just sit here and make some kind of decisions because they know you know, unless you just have had limited exposure, sometimes I can kind of get at the people. They just that's all they see, that's all they know, uh, with doing that. But at the end, that you still probably had some examples mm -hmm. to to to, to want to do better. You know what I mean? And you have to want to do better. You have to, even if you don't have. Let me tell you something. Examples are great. Don't get me wrong. But the drive and understanding that what the situation that you're in now as an adult, the situation that you were in as a child growing up, is not the same. If it's a bad situation, it's not the same situation that you want to be in later on in life. Mm. I knew this at I knew this at 10, 11, 12 years old, not having a mom and a dad around. I knew that I did not want to be like I am today, like yeah. I was today. I didn't want to be trying to figure out what I'm going to eat today. Yeah. I didn't want to be trying to figure out what clothes I'm going to wear. So at a certain point, a child, especially an adult child, has to say to themselves from their parents' perspective, okay, my mom did all I did, all, I, all she could do. Now I have to take over as an adult and move forward with my life to know that I can't keep doing the same things that I was doing before. Especially if shit ain't going the right way. Right. Especially if that you see, look, I'm still doing this. The ship stay the sinking. Mm -hmm. At some point, I gotta make a decision and do better. Again, guy, we're talking about how to deal with uh, disappointment with adult children. Uh, that's not a comment there. The next one is focus on unconditional love. Love unconditionally. Reaffirm your love for your child. Make sure they know that your love and support for them are not contingent on their life choices or accomplishment. Let mm -hmm. them know you love them. Let them know you care about them. But also let them know, like shit, this is your making these decisions. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love you. I don't like the shit you're doing, right. but I still love that's not going to change anything because they're going to do things. It can be lifestyle, it can be sexuality, it can be, you know, just certain career paths or whatever and stuff. You can say that that's still your kid. Right. And at the end of the day, you can sit and say to yourself, well, I, I don't like it, I don't appreciate it, I don't approve it, but that ain't your life to live. Right, that's and their you'll, life you'll, live. you'll get so damn caught up because of the way you think, your ego, or your way you look at it, and you'll lose your damn child. Mm. You'll mm. lose your mm. damn child. And um, one time spent, you can't get it back. That's true. And you spend That's so true. much time uh, condemning your child because they didn't go on a certain pathway. And before you know it, they gone, you gone, time gone. You missed out on so much shit because you were so stuck on your ideology. Mm. On, on certain things and you got to be kind of mindful. And that's all of us. Right. That's right. all of us. We got to just sit there and just be thinking about that sometimes. Another thing we need to do is make sure you manage expectations. Adjust expectations. Adjust your expectations to understand that their life choices may not match your vision for them. Allow them space to live their lives, make mistakes, and learn from them. Okay? Make sure you do that, guys. You want to make sure they look, that, hey, look, I'm going to let you bump your head a couple of times, this, that, and that. You ready? Whatever. And, but but don't be so much of a stickler, yeah, a stickler or a safety net mm -hmm. where they can't learn and grow from it. Okay. We break our own hearts not managing our expectations. Absolutely. We break our own hearts that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another one thing, guys, just find support. Talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Share your feelings with a close friend, a partner, therapist. Sometimes talking about your emotions and someone you can trust can provide valuable insight and support. You, when we sit there and look at it, the way I, my perspective, the way it is, that's my perspective, and I think that's how things should be going. But a lot of times, if I don't necessarily uh, get another perspective, I can be so stuck in tunnel vision. Right. You know, been many times I talk to my dog, Pate, Pate, be like, man, poop, man. You know, they it's different now. The kids mm -hmm. got to deal with this. Kids got to deal with that. Like, man, you right. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And I need to hear that. Right. You know, just sometimes bouncing out ideas. You know, you you know you might fellowship with other cats and they kicking out things that they 
their children may have uh, uh, disappointed them on, but you, you need to kind of, uh, uh, Six Redbone say, you so true, Lap. The, um, we'll lose it with how we feel. Mm -hmm. And you need sometimes be able to confide and be able to bounce off ideas and feelings to people because, again, you, you be so stuck on mm -hmm. your way. So, you know, definitely find somebody you can consult with or uh, find support with. You need to also make sure you're focusing on positive aspects. Mm -hmm. Appreciate their qualities. Focus on the positive aspects of your child's personality and character. Appreciate their qualities can help you see beyond the disappointments. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's one thing I think a lot of times we don't necessarily do. I, I went, when I was uh, at the school yesterday, a couple of them kids, when I, and I say this a lot, people hear me say it, so I ain't, you, know, you gotta uh, be hiding from it. When I go to some of these schools, I damn sure appreciate my kids. <laughs> right. You know, the kid said yesterday, he said, I wanna be an entrepreneur, sell houses and shit like that. He said, and shit like that. Seven, eight grown men. All right. It didn't even process that it was adults around and this young right. man for him just to freely cuss like that. Right. Right? Right. I know my kids. Respect for they say, respect for authority, right. fear, fear of me, whatever the hell, would never do that. Right. Even my older son, he, he damn close to 30. It wasn't damn, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, I mean, I was in my 30s and, and talking to my, my grandma, and I would not cuss, try my best not to cuss. But if I did, because I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Because it slip out sometimes. Yeah. But I, he just threw it out to you like yeah. checkers. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like dice. And, and, you know, and, and you'll miss out because you're looking at certain things that they have a certain path with and go and miss out on their brilliance. You might want them to go on a certain career path or these certain things, but you're not looking at the brilliance that they do have mm -hmm. on certain. They may be artists. They mm -hmm. may be doing certain things. Well, man, you should be doing this, that, and that. And I'm not sitting there saying that. You don't maybe have a legitimate gripe or a legitimate way you feel. But at some point, you got to sit there and say, well, look, man, I'm tearing his ass down, but they, they doing all right. Mm -hmm. So just kind of keep that in mind, people. Uh, allow room for growth. Be open to change. People change and evolve over time. Be open to the possibility that your adult child's choices may change in the future and they might pursue different paths. Um, how deep you want to go into it, that's a different when you, you open, you know, you, you, you allow room for growth. Or you're wishing upon a, a, a star. Okay. Because a lot of times, I know a lot of parents be like, man, I've heard them be like, man, I ain't know what was going on. And all of a sudden, the child did a 360. Mm -hmm. Boom, they different. Uh, it can happen mm -hmm. uh, with, with doing it. But again, like I said, as a parent, that's why we're having a discussion again, how to deal with a disappointment with adult children. You got to kind of keep yourself in kind of in a balance. Mm -hmm. Because you ain't had a damn stroke dealing with some of the behavior that they doing. So you right. gotta give them a chance, like, hey, look, they just ain't mature enough. They bumping their head, they don't make sense or what they doing and stuff. Remember, we as old, we older, we know more about being 17, 18, 19, and 20, 20 right. more than they do, mm -hmm. right? Cause we've been there, done that. And sometimes we just had to sometimes just kind of uh, give them a little rope and say, man, they just maturity. They ain't seen enough, they don't know enough. Um, a key thing, all guys, we, we nearing there, near the end, Practice self-care. You got to take care of yourself. Focus on self-care activities to bring you joy and relaxation. Engage in hobbies, exercise, meditation, things like that. Guys, get away from situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, you be so damn focused on this, what, they, what this boy did and this girl doing and stuff. You worrying about your grandkids and all this other kind of shit. You forget about yourself. Next thing you know, you in damn, you know, mercy room. Right. With so your, you got step every back damn thing that. high, blood, sugar, blood <laughs> pressure, right? Every damn thing, all your numbers off the charts because you're you've lost yourself. You're stressing. Yeah, you're stressing out and all this other kind of stuff about somebody that's making a decision and they're not even worried about the impact that it has on you, right? right. So you gotta be very mindful of that. And uh, also, lastly, guys, consider professional help, family mm -hmm. counseling. If the disappointment and related conflicts persist, consider family counseling. A professional mediator can facilitate productive conversations and help bridge gaps in the understanding. Um, one thing I do is say I, I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm a big proponent of uh, counseling, family counseling. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will say, all parties have to be willing to try. Right. If everybody willing to try, that shit ain't gonna work. <laughs> right. That shit ain't gonna work. So that's just one key thing. I think a lot of people have to, you know, understand that we just want to just have uh, counseling and things like that. And guys, remember, it's natural for parents to feel disappointed. And it's, and it's uh, also essential to nurture 
uh, nurture the relationship and find ways to accept your child, your adult child for who they are. Cultivating understanding, empathy, and open communication can go a long way in maintaining a positive and healthy connection with your grown up offspring. Mm -hmm. Love your kids, love them forever, but you know, stay true to who you are. Right. And everything, but also be realistic about it's who you are best for the situation. Mm -hmm. And y'all just kind of just be able to move from there, okay? Yeah. I hope this conversation helped you guys and stuff like that because I went through it. And a lot of people go through it and stuff like that. And I think um, we suffer as parents in silence a lot because of some of the things our kids are and aren't doing. So I hope this conversation helped you guys, you know. Um, but make sure if you haven't, again, we've been streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Twitter. Go to the Change Your Lives YouTube channel. That's the main hub where we have over 700 videos on the YouTube channel covering information just like this. Again, that's Change Your Lives, hosted by Deontay Burton. If you Google Deontay Burton um, uh, on Google, probably the, the YouTube channel will pop up. First, you'll see the little blue man icon. Uh, logo on the uh, for the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, take advantage of more great conversation information, just like what we discussed tonight. Listen uh, again. Uh, I will be putting up information next week, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks uh, coming up in regards to the tax course. Anybody interested in becoming a tax preparer and things like that? So that's coming out of pipe. But I do want to tell you guys again from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me, uh, helping us grow the channel and everything. But definitely, definitely, definitely subscribe. And, uh, uh, share the information. Let tell all your family, friends, subscribe to the channel as well. Take care of yourself. Stay warm. Be safe. Love you. And I'll talk with you soon.